Haiti, two weeks after the natural disaster. This private Dutch rescue team are no longer looking for survivors. They're resigned to looking for bodies so that the locals can finally grieve. More than a thousand people are still thought to be under the rubble. Four days after the earthquake, the urban search and rescue team are hard at work. And this rescue dog has just found a woman who's still alive. She's been stuck under the rubble for almost a week and getting her out safely is no simple task. This is the first time the team have found someone alive. They find 33-year-old Paula and her two-year-old daughter, Juliana. This is a miracle, isn't it? Both of them, the mother and little daughter, truly amazing. This is why we work so hard. Two weeks after the disaster, the team have returned to the Netherlands. The rescue workers have left. But what about the people who were saved? What became of Paula and Juliana? After their rescue, they were transferred to a Russian emergency hospital located on the outskirts of the city. The hospital is full of patients in critical condition and every day more come to join them. The Russian team of doctors and nurses was hand-picked for their experience of disasters. They remember the Dutch rescue work as well. Paula and Juliana's rescue was a beacon of light amidst chaos. But the little girl and her mother had more injuries than expected and both are still receiving treatment. This is two-year-old Juliana, the little girl who was rescued from under the rubble. She was brought here injured and severely dehydrated. Her blood supply has been constricted. We've already removed her calf muscles because the muscles were dead. We couldn't keep them because dead muscles would poison the rest of her body. This is called intoxication, so that's why we did it. She's stable now. I hope she makes it. Paula, Juliana's mother, lies two beds away. The mother had been under the rubble for four days. She's seriously injured. We cleaned her wounds, but unfortunately we were unable to save her left leg. We're doing the best we can, but they still have a long way to go. The next couple of days will be crucial in determining whether the poisoning in Paula's leg has spread to the rest of her body. Dr Vladimir takes Juliana for a walk every day. He has a weak spot for Juliana and her mother. I wanted to escape, but the house fell on top of us. I screamed, help, help. They did hear us, but it was too dangerous to get us out. Juliana was crying next to me, but there was nothing I could do. I was stuck for four days. Then they started digging me out. That was the first time I got some water. God sent the Dutch to save me. God wanted me to live, and that's why he dug me out. I'm very upset about the many deaths, but I feel blessed 
because God has saved me. The doctor takes Juliana back to her room. Her wounds must be attended to daily and she finds the pain hard to bear. When we come back the next day, we find Paula's bed empty. She's having yet more surgery after poisoning was discovered in her other leg. Dr. Vladimir is taking Juliana to a different ward where she can be with other children. Since she was pulled from the rubble two weeks ago, she hasn't spoken a word. The afternoon brings bad news. Paula's second leg will also have to be amputated. This is Paula's neighborhood, or what's left of it. Once a setting for Paula's heroic rescue, it's now a graveyard of bad memories. In this playground, a small refugee camp of survivors cuddle together to keep warm. And all of Paula's neighbours worry about her future. All will she do to, to stay in the house and do nothing? Because she, she, she's always doing something. You can get up at 10 o'clock, everybody's sleeping and she's doing something. For people who, 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 like me, who got nothing, it's difficult. And for her, maybe that's going to be impossible. Paula's cousin, Stanley, takes us to her house and shows us the spot where the rescue workers found her. Here. Some passed by there, some by there. You want to come? It's possible. It's possible. Be careful. What a moment. At the same time, he discovers the body oh, of a close my friend. Oh, God. Oh, my God. A rabbit is eating the body. It's hard to see. Wow. I could do anything, but now I just got to pray. My Lord, please, please, please tell me why. Stanley visits Paula and Juliana every day. Why? Is she, um, why is she so swollen up? She used to be skinny. The poisoning and the surgery have taken their toll. And a frightened Paula asks Stanley if he'll call a relative. She's worried about who will take care of Juliana if anything happens to her. You have to speak now. Hello. I'm all right. I'm in a lot of pain. What about you? Just give me the telephone, darling. I'm doing well. Bye. Stanley, come on. No, you're too tired. In the children's ward, Juliana shows signs of improvement, uttering her first words since the earthquake. Lila? Oh, she talks. She's speaking. Uh, Say hello. Lila? bonjour. Stanley says goodbye to Paula and Juliana that evening with hope.
but a few hours later, Paula dies. Paula died of blood poisoning on Tuesday night, the 26th of January. She was 33 years old. It's a heavy blow for the Russian emergency hospital. And one that Dr. Vladimir is finding particularly hard to handle. He wonders whether he did enough and why the Americans who've better facilities refuse to treat Paula. The doctors and nurses try to raise their spirits by lavishing attention on Juliana, who's still too young to fully understand what she's lost. Without a spouse and with her other children living on the other side of the city, nobody comes to claim Paula's body. So according to the policy here, she's taken directly to the cemetery. In the end, it's Stanley who has to organize a last minute funeral. And now we're gonna pull her out. And... No, when they are. There are no other family members present, and there's little respect given to the makeshift ceremony. <laughs> Yesterday, all of the patients left the emergency hospital, and today, the Russian medical team will leave Haiti. The medical team have nurtured Juliana as long as possible, but now the time has come to let her go. Dr. Vladimir watches on as Stanley takes Juliana into an uncertain future.